In this question, you have multitask requirements, all of which are testing topics that surround the preparation of year-end financial statements. The background information reveals that Malwright Co. has an accounting year-end of 31st October and that the accountant is preparing the financial statements as at 31st October 20x7. Your very first task is to think about the list of items that have been presented in the trial balance and to establish whether they belong on the statement of financial position for the year end 31st October X7. So let's start from the top of the list. Buildings at cost would be included. The accumulated depreciation, if you note the date, is the information at the start of the year and when we show the balance of our buildings at year end, it will be the accumulated depreciation at the end of the year that would appear. So here we're going to select no. Plant at cost is a non-current asset, would appear in the SOFP. Just like with the accumulated depreciation for the buildings, here again you see that the plant accumulated depreciation is the balance at the start of the year. We're interested in the balance at the end of the year, so here from the drop down we would select no. Bank balance is a current asset and so would appear in the SOFP. Revenue, however, is an income and would appear in the statement of profit or loss, so we're going to select no. Net purchases is an expense, so we're going to select no. Inventory at the start of the year is opening inventory, which is part of cost of sales, and so again, we're going to select no from the drop down. Cash is a current asset and would appear in the SOFP. Trade payables is a liability, would appear in the SOFP. The trade receivables is a current asset and it would appear in the SOFP, so we select yes. The administrative expenses is a cost and therefore would appear in the statement of profit or loss, so we're going to select no here. The allowance for receivables at the start of the year is not going to appear in the SOFP at year end. We want the year end figure, so we're going to select no here. In a similar manner, the retained earnings at the start of the year would also not appear. It's the retained earnings at the end of the year that we are interested in. The share capital is going to appear in our SOFP within the equity section and the share premium account would also appear in the SOFP and as you can see we've answered all of these options correctly which means we can move on to task two. In this particular task, you are being asked to calculate the allowance for receivables that's going to be increased to 5% of the trade receivables, as well as think about the double entries that would appear. Now, to attempt a question like this, I would encourage that you think about the calculation of the allowance for receivables at year end. What do we know? Well, we know by looking at the trial balance that the trade receivables at year end amounts to 320,000. So, if we start with trade receivables of 320,000, we can take 5% of that to give us the balance of the allowance for receivables at year end and 5% of this amounts to 16,000. We can also see from the trial balance that the allowance for receivables at the start of the year is an amount of 10,000. What we want to do is increase this so that at the end of the year or the carry forward allowance equates to 16,000. And so we can see that this is an increase of 6,000. Whenever you increase an allowance for receivables, you are debiting an expense and crediting the allowance for receivables. With that in mind, if we go into task two, we can attempt the first part. They're asking for the year-end journal for the allowance and we need to select from the drop-down menu. For trade receivables, there is no implication because of this allowance. Remember, the allowance for receivables is a separate ledger entry, so there is no credit or debit to post. 
We're told in this question that the allowance for receivables is to be treated as an administrative expense. Therefore, the admin expenses or the administrative expenses will be debited. The allowance for receivables is being increased. Now, this allowance for receivables is an entry that's a reduction to a receivable account. Receivables are typically on the debit, so to reduce them, we would credit. And so the allowance for receivables balance is going to be a credit entry. There is no implication on revenue, so we can select that there's no debit or credit to post to revenue. Finally, we need to complete the following, which is the amount to include in the statement of profit or loss after the allowance is increased to 5%. We've already calculated this as 6,000. So we can type in the six. Bear in mind, you're already given the thousands there. So simply type in the six and you can move on. And again, you can see that we've attempted all parts of this question correctly. Moving on to task three, then here we're being asked to think about depreciation. So it says that plant is depreciated at 20% per annum using the reducing balance method and that buildings are depreciated at 5% per annum on their original cost. And depreciation is to be treated as a cost of sales expense. Firstly, we need to think about the journal entries that would be posted as a result of the above. Now, actually, we can do this part of the question without even thinking about the calculations. Typically, when you post depreciation, you're going to be increasing an expense. That's a debit to the expense category, and you'll be crediting the respective accumulated depreciation. So the question does reveal that depreciation should be charged to the cost of sales. So if we start off with the administrative expenses, there is no implication to this ledger because we are strictly told that depreciation will be to cost of sales. So to cost of sales, we would debit. There is no implication to the cost account for both buildings or the plant because remember, accumulated depreciation is a separate entry. Therefore, to accumulate a depreciation for both buildings and the plant, we're going to be crediting. We've still got some calculations to think about for this part of the question. So let's think about a working that we might produce. So if we start with buildings and our plant, and we know that buildings are being depreciated straight line, but with plant, it's reducing balance. Get down your cost number first. And we know from the trial balance, if we scroll back above, that the cost of the buildings is 740,000 and that the cost of the plant is an amount of 220,000. We've also got the accumulated depreciation, which I'll get down here. So the accumulated depreciation for buildings is 60,000 and for plant, it's 110,000. That means at the beginning of the year, we have a carrying value for buildings that amounts to 680,000 and for plant that amounts to 110,000, which means our depreciation for the current year, which I'll abbreviate as CY, on our buildings as it's based on cost is an amount that equates to the policy that's given for our buildings. And if we scroll back down to the task, we are told that for plant, the depreciation is 20% reduced in balance, but for buildings, it's 5% on the cost. So 5% of the 740,000, which gives us 37,000. Now, for plant on the reduced imbalance, so we take this percentage on the carrying value of this non current asset, so 20% of the 110,000, that's going to give us an amount of 22,000. Now, actually, the question doesn't ask us for the carrying value at the end of the year, but just for completeness, we can cast down to get 643,000 for our buildings and 88,000. For plant. So at this point, we can type in our answer here, simply entering that 37 because you've got the thousand already pre-populated. And for plant, that's going to be 22. So at this point, we've completed this question and we can see that we've attempted all parts of it correctly.
Bringing us on to the final two tasks that remain, and in task four, we are given information about the closing inventory. The closing inventory is valued at 75,000, and ignoring depreciation, we now need to calculate what the cost of sales would be. So again, we can produce a little working. So producing a working for our cost of sales, we know that we always have opening inventory. And opening inventory is presented to us in the trial balance, which we'll come on to. We always add purchases and then we deduct the closing inventory. So let's slot in that closing inventory as a reduction. We have it here in the question. And if we scroll back to our trial balance, we can see that the opening inventory is 160,000. And we can see that our purchases amount to 1,140,000. So now if we cast down to get our cost of sales, we've got 1,225,000. So we can go into our task and type in our answer. So here we're going to simply type the 1,225 as the 1,000 has already been populated. Finally, moving on to task five, we're told here that there's an invoice of $15,000 relating to energy for the quarter 30th November 20x7. Now, bear in mind that if you have a year end, that is October 20x7, and you've got the quarter to November, that implies that the quarter started on the 1st of September x7. And we're told that the invoice relating to this cost wasn't received until December 20x7, which is clearly post year end. Now, what's quite easy to visualize in this timeline is that actually two months of this energy cost would therefore not have been recorded because the invoice wasn't received until after the year end. This is a typical example for an accruals adjustment. So the question does say what would be the double entry to post the adjustment for energy cost? Well, before we even come on to the calculation, we can simply identify that that would be a debit to the administrative cost. We're told the energy costs go to the admin expenses and we can credit the accruals which is a liability, an amount that they will need to pay in the subsequent year because the invoice was received post year end. The amount that we're going to be posting as a year end adjustment is going to equate to the two thirds of the invoice balance of 15,000 because two months out of the three in that quarter is what's relevant for our year end. This gives us 10,000 so we can simply slot in here the 10,000. And there you can see that we've attempted the question and all parts of it correctly.